Hello, and welcome to New Frame Plus, a series about video game animation. Are you interested in becoming a video game animator? I mean, you're watching this, so I assume you must be at least a little curious. And I don't blame you. Taking an inanimate object like a drawing, pixel sprite, or digital model and transforming it into a living, thinking character is slow but satisfying work. Today, I want to tell you how to not only pursue this career, but excel at it. Of course, as with most careers, there's not just one viable path to success in this industry, but I'm hoping that this video guide will at least give you a general idea of everything you're going to need to learn, how you can land that first gig, and how to be great at the job. And to make sure that this guide is as thorough as possible, I have enlisted the help of a bunch of my peers. So in advance, a special thanks to Mike Youngbluth, Jonathan Cooper, Gwen Frey, Dan Lowe, Lily Scaldaferi, Simon Unger, Michael Ozzie, Lana Bashinsky, Jason Shum, Christian Janjuk, Eric Luda, and David Gibson. These are professionals working in the industry today, many of whom are way more experienced than I am, and their help was invaluable in putting this video together. But all right, let's get started. Let's say you're starting from square one, but you know you want to be an animator for video games. What's the first thing you should do? I would say the first thing is, step one, figure out what kind of animation you want to do. What kind of animator do you want to be? Because there's a wide variety of animation jobs out there. You could be a 3D animator, you could be a 2D animator, or you could be a pixel animator. You could be an effects animator even. You could specialize in creating animations for gameplay or for cinematics. Or heck, if you happen to have a knack for programming or just technical problem solving, you could be a technical animator. The industry always needs more of those. You may not be certain what sort of animator you want to be right now, and that's okay. But it is a good question to be thinking about, so take the time to do a little research. At the end of the day, all of these specializations are built on the same core animation principles, but they do each have their own workflows and requisite skill sets. Heck, try dabbling in a few of them. See if anything strikes your fancy. Knowing what specific sort of animation work you're most interested in doing will help you to know which skills you need to focus on honing. Okay, so now that you've got a rough idea of what you want to do, it's time for the most important step on this list. Step two, become good at it. Now it is time to learn the craft. Fortunately, there are all kinds of resources available to you. To start, you're gonna wanna pick up a particular book, The Animator's Survival Kit by Richard Williams. Just about every animator I've ever met knows it and probably owns it. It is still one of the best books on the fundamentals of animation that you're gonna find. It may describe everything in terms of old school hand-drawn techniques, but the fundamentals it teaches apply to every form. Odds are, no matter which form of animation you pursue, you will be referring back to this book for the rest of your career. So just go ahead and get it now. You might also consider picking up Game Anim by Jonathan Cooper. This one's much newer, in fact it just came out this year, but if games are the medium you want to be working in, this book is going to be a big help in understanding the particulars of the medium. Now, if you're serious about pursuing animation as a career, you're probably going to want to look into some schools. There are a number of universities out there with animation programs on offer, some of which are fantastic, but they can be pretty expensive. Alternatively, you could look into online animation schools. These trade schools have the benefit of being more focused courses, often costing less money, requiring fewer years of schooling, and allowing you to enroll from anywhere in the world. I can personally vouch for the quality of Animation Mentor, but there are several good options out there, so be prepared to do some research. There are a lot of metrics you can use to gauge a school's quality, but my personal favorite approach is to simply look at the animation work of its graduates. The average quality of the student reels coming out of an animation program will say a lot about the quality of that program. Better yet, see if you can find out each school's graduate job placement rate. What percentage of graduates from each program actually succeed in landing an animation job after graduating? That'll tell you a lot about how effective any given program is at preparing its students for employment in the industry. It's also worth at least considering the school's location, because schools do tend to network with the studios closest to them. 
Now, fair warning to the 2D animators out there, you're probably gonna have an easier time finding the traditional animation courses at the universities. And to the pixel animators, you're not likely to find formal courses for your craft anywhere. But pixel animation is all built on traditional 2D fundamentals anyway, so your best bet is probably to look into the 2D courses. Then you can dig into online resources for pixel art on your own time to see how best to apply those traditional 2D skills to your chosen medium. Of course, expensive schooling isn't the only route available to you. Self-teaching is always an option. You absolutely can just download a demo for Maya, Max, Blender, Toon Boom, Spine, or Aceprite and start figuring this stuff out for yourself. You've got a long, difficult road of self-training ahead though, so take advantage of every single resource you can find. Fortunately, there are a wide variety of resources available to you, way more than there were when I was coming up. And now there's even an easy way to find them. Go to animatorsresourcekit.blog and you will find an enormous list of tutorials, books, rigs, and tools which you can use, many of which are freely available. Just remember that your focus should be learning the craft, not the tools. Once you've internalized the principles of animation, you'll be able to jump between tools and even animation mediums way easier. Now, if you're hoping to get into pixel animation, you may need to do some further searching to find resources specific to your craft. I do know of one particularly good book called Pixel Logic by Michael Ozzy. It is an excellent resource, especially for the price. And you can actually find a lot of great pixel animators just sharing tips and tutorials on blogs or Twitter, so seek those people out and absorb all you can. Honestly, make use of this stuff even if you are attending an animation school. Use every resource you can find and keep looking for ways to improve. Because at the end of the day, animation is a pretty competitive field. A lot of people are going to be applying for your dream job, and those people will often have way more experience than you. So if you want to be the one to land that job offer, the quality and creativity of your work has to stand out from the pack. Of course, that doesn't mean that you yourself should stand out from the pack. Quite the contrary, connecting with other animators should be one of your top priorities. Don't work in a bubble. Build yourself a network of peers who can give you honest critique. I know it can be scary asking for feedback, but it is so, so important to getting better. I won't lie, it's gonna take you a long time to truly get good. Internalizing the fundamentals of animation until they become second nature is likely to take years of practice. And that's okay. Take the time you need to master those fundamentals. I know you're gonna wanna jump right to the exciting stuff and start animating a whole complicated fight sequence or a whole short film by yourself or something, but trust me, you will get good so much faster if you take the time to master those simple fundamentals first. Maybe start by just trying to animate the best dang bouncing ball anybody's ever seen. Then maybe like a pendulum, or this thing. Except better than these, like these are my old student assignments, you can, you can do better than that. But then maybe move on to simple body mechanics, like a walk cycle or an attack, dances, that sort of thing. Then maybe a really simple acting shot. Keep building to more and more complicated stuff, mastering the fundamentals along the way, and you will be so much better by the end. No one becomes an animation god overnight. But okay, now that you've put in the time and become an animator to be reckoned with, your next step is going to be... Step 3. Build a demo reel. To get a job in animation, you're gonna need to show potential employers examples of your work. I can't stress it enough, this demo reel is the thing that will get you hired, so you want to put together the best one possible. If you aren't sure where to start or what your reel should look like, try looking up the reels of other accomplished animators. You can find a lot of them publicly viewable online, and studying them is a great way to not only see what a good demo reel should contain, but also show you the level of quality you need to aim for. If you want a good place to start, Jonathan Cooper created a game anim group on Vimeo that is jam-packed with high-quality reels. I'll link to it below. I know this may feel intimidating at first, but trust me, setting a high bar for yourself will serve you well. Now, a lot of people have written up tips for constructing demo reels, but here are some of the most important guidelines. Include only your best work and polish the heck out of those shots. You are aiming to put your best foot forward here, and 45 seconds of incredible animation will make you look way better than three minutes of... Uh, mixed quality. I know a guy who landed a job at Blue Sky with a demo reel that was just 20 seconds long. I cannot stress enough how important this is. Inconsistent quality is a big red flag for recruiters, because it suggests to them that you can't see the difference yet. 
your reel is only as good as the worst shot on it. So if you're looking at a particular shot and you're not sure if it's good enough for the reel, either make it better or just cut it. Also, as a general rule, put your best shot first and your second best shot last. And don't hide your animation behind fancy lighting, particles, or camera moves. Good lighting and camera work can be a great plus for your reel, but the people doing the hiring really want to see proof of your animation skills, so try not to obscure those behind flashy presentation. And try to show the full range of your strengths. Versatility is appealing. Whatever you're good at, be it acting shots, realistic body mechanics, or cartoony action, have your reel show that off. That said, it is always in your best interests to cater your reel to the specific employers and types of work that you want. Recruiters love to be able to look at a reel and see that you can do exactly the kind of animation they need. If you send a reel full of nothing but wacky, cartoony animation to a studio that almost exclusively makes realistic looking games, even if your cartoony animation is amazing, even if you probably could do the realistic animation they want, they are very likely to pass you over for someone else. Same if you send a reel full of acting shots to a studio that never does cutscenes, or a reel of 3D animation work to a studio seeking a pixel artist, so cater your reel to the workplaces you're applying to. Heck, make custom versions of the reel to send to different studios if you've got to. And if you want to win some major bonus points, show off your animation working in a game engine. Making animation look good in animation software is one thing, but making it look good in an interactive environment with proper blends and transitions is a great way to prove that you know your stuff. Also, never, ever plagiarize work. Don't copy somebody else's animation. Don't try to pass off somebody else's work as your own. There is no faster way to get blacklisted from this industry. Just don't ever do it. And finally, try to make the presentation as broadly appealing as you can. Avoid including anything offensive or unprofessional. You don't want to blow your chance with a studio over something like an unreadable font or profanity or an obnoxious background music track. Okay, so now you have a great reel. At long last, you are ready for step four, the job hunt. At this point, it's just a matter of finding out who's hiring and sending out applications. Now, since you have no professional experience yet, that first job is gonna be the hardest one to get, so be ready to cast a wide net and look for internship opportunities if you're a student. If you go to gamedevmap.com, you can find a list of most of the game studios in any given area. This can be a great way to see if there are any studios near you, but unless you just happen to live in a game dev hub like San Francisco or Montreal or LA or Seattle, chances are that you're gonna need to be prepared to relocate. But apply everywhere, even to studios that aren't your top pick, even to jobs that you don't feel like you're good enough for yet. Believe me, the first animation job I landed coming out of school was at Pixar Canada. I still feel like that shouldn't have happened, but it did, and only because I actually took the time to apply on a whim, so just do it. But don't send in the same application twice. If you don't hear back from a place, just assume they passed on you and move on. Or even better, politely ask for feedback. Chances are they won't have time, but it never hurts to ask. Maybe later, when you see them post a job opening again, and you've updated your reel a bit, you can give it another go. Networking's gonna help you a lot here, too. Remember when I said how important it is to build a network of peers and animator friends? This is the other reason that it's good to get out there and meet people. There are so many great animator communities to be found on the internet, so go get involved in them and make some friends. You will be amazed how often those connections result in future job opportunities. Now, the kinds of places you'll be applying are likely to vary based on the medium you've chosen. If you're a 3D animator, you're going to have a lot of options. From AAA to indie, the industry has a lot of demand for 3D animation right now. If you're a 2D animator, your options are slightly more limited. Expect to do more of your job hunting in the indie, mobile, and casual gaming scenes. And if you're a pixel animator, well, those jobs are almost exclusively coming from the indie scene these days, so start looking there. But then, once you've finally landed that first job and officially entered the industry, it's time for the final step. Step 5. Make a good impression. Start your fledgling career off right. Be professional, do good work, and play nice with others. Be the sort of coworker who people would love to work with again. This industry is smaller than you might think, and it can be unstable. Contract gigs, layoffs, even studio closures are tragically common, so odds are good that you're gonna be looking for your second game animation job eventually. And when that day comes, it's gonna be a lot easier to find that next job if people like working with you. So there you go. 
That is how you become a game animator. But let's say that's not good enough for you. Maybe you want to be a good animator. Maybe even a great animator. What sorts of skills or traits make somebody great at this job? What will guarantee that your work is not only consistently excellent, but also consistently in high demand? Well, here are some tips. Tip number one, always be learning. Learn more about animation, learn more about tools, learn more about game development, learn more about storytelling, learn more about people. Keep expanding your skill set. The more stuff you know how to do, the more valuable an employee you become and keep learning those animation fundamentals inside and out. Heck, I know people who have gone back to animation school even after working in the industry for years. Mastering those basic principles never stops being important. Tip number two, study movement every day. Our entire craft is about analyzing and reproducing movement. So learn to observe that movement in your daily life. Keep an eye out for interesting walks or expressions. Learn to analyze the intricacies of body language. Think about how you would animate that body language, how you would exaggerate it for maximum clarity and effect. If you see some interesting movement in a video, frame through that footage and study the body mechanics at play. Heck, study footage of yourself performing various actions sometimes. Actually getting up and doing the movements yourself can be a great way to better feel and internalize the physicality of an action. Tip number three, prioritize studying real life. It can be tempting to spend a lot of your energy studying other people's animation, but ultimately reality is the thing you should be studying most, because real life is the source material we're all drawing from. When you're looking at another animator's work, what you are seeing is their creative interpretation of reality. And if you spend all of your time analyzing other animators' interpretations, you're not going to understand the source material any better. The only thing you'll learn is how to replicate somebody else's interpretation of it. And if that's all you know, then and your work is gonna start looking derivative. Now, don't get me wrong, studying other people's interpretations can still be extremely helpful. Learning how the greats who came before you interpreted and stylized reality can be inspiring and teach you a lot of helpful tricks. Just don't forget that they were working from reality when they did it, and you should too. Tip number four, study acting. You don't necessarily have to be a good actor, because that is a fundamentally different skill, but it is still important to understand the fundamentals of acting. I mean, when you're animating a character, you're effectively acting through them, and you want that performance to be interesting. So if you have the chance, take an acting class or two, or an improv course. Try to learn how to get into that acting headspace. And make a habit of studying your favorite actor's performances so you can learn from the best. Watch movies and plays, and start building a library of inspiring performances and characters in your head so you can reference them in the future. Tip number five, learn to draw. If you're planning to be a traditional 2D animator, you are definitely going to need to hone your skills with a pencil, or stylus, whatever. But even if you're not planning to go into hand-drawn animation, drawing is still a very useful complementary skill. You'll be able to sketch out your ideas during the planning phase, and pre-visualize poses and silhouettes before diving into your software of choice. I don't care what kind of animation you do, a life drawing class will only make your work better. Tip number six, avoid performance cliches. Don't just default to animating the first, most obvious creative choice that pops into your head, because it's probably the same predictable idea that dozens of other animators already did. Instead, take an extra few minutes and see if you can come up with some other, more interesting ways to animate something. You might still go with that first idea, but you don't want to just default to it. Tip number seven, be a good team player. Chances are high that you are going to be working with other people, so it is imperative that you be somebody people like to work with. You need to be able to collaborate, communicate with people from other disciplines, take criticism well, and offer it to others in a supportive way. Read some books on the subject if you've got to. Again, if people like working with you, they're going to want to keep working with you. And that's good. Tip number eight. Know what your animation needs to achieve in the larger context of the project. It is possible to make a beautiful, mind-blowingly awesome piece of animation that is 100% wrong for the project it's intended for. So it's important to be able to recognize what your animation needs to functionally achieve in the greater context of that project and adapt your work accordingly. You need to be able to adapt to the aesthetic style of the project. You need to be able to adapt to the project's gameplay needs and technical limitations. If your animation is only good outside the context of the game it's meant for, then it actually isn't all that good. 
Tip number nine, learn how to implement your animations in game. This is only becoming more important as a skill. Being able to make beautiful animation is great, but things always look different when you put them in game, when the player has control and other animations are blending into and out of yours at unpredictable times. Being able to participate in the implementation process will not only make you a more desirable employee, but it'll also give you the tools you need to make your work look even better in engine. Because at the end of the day, how it looks in engine is all that really matters. Video game animation has to balance aesthetics, response and clarity all at once, and there is no better way to master that balance than to be the person actually hooking the animations up in-engine. I know this stuff looks intimidating from the outside, but trust me, it is so much easier to learn now than it used to be. I mean, you can download Unity and Unreal Engine for free right now and just start playing around. There is an abundance of free tutorials and learning resources out there. The Unreal folks have even been doing educational live streams on the subject. Again, if you can show that you know how to do this on your actual demo reel, you have no idea how many bonus points that is going to score you. Tip number 10, consider learning some basic scripting. If you're like me, code is scary. But code is also what video games and your animation software run on. So knowing how to do some basic scripting can unlock all sorts of potential for your work. It is amazing the animation tricks and workflow efficiencies you can achieve with just a little bit of scripting knowledge. Plus, knowing this stuff will make it even easier for you to communicate and collaborate with programmers and the more technical members of your team. At the end of the day, you're not going to need this skill to find work, but having the skill will act as a multiple to your effectiveness and employability. Tip number 11. Consider learning how to rig. Rigs are the puppetry-like armatures that computer animators use to animate characters. They can be extremely complicated, and there are people whose entire job is just being good at building good rigs for the animators to use. But if you know just a little about building them yourself, you will unlock so many possibilities for yourself and your work. This is going to be an essential skill to have when you're working in small studios where there's no dedicated rig builder to be found. And it'll even be helpful knowledge in big studios, even when there's an entire team handling the rig building for you. Again, not necessarily something you have to know, but being good at it will make you an even more valuable employee. Like, no joke, this industry does not have enough rig builders. They are in high demand. So if you want to dramatically increase your employability, going this route is not a bad idea. Tip number 12, learn the fundamentals of game design. One of the primary purposes of gameplay animation is to provide visual information and feedback. That means that your animation is inevitably going to have a significant impact on the larger experience your team is creating. And it's really important that you understand that impact, which means you're going to need to know the basics of game design. You don't have to be an expert, but knowing those design fundamentals is going to be just as important as understanding the basics of acting or storytelling. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, tip number 13, keep pushing yourself to get better. You are never going to hit a point where you have finished getting better. Even the best animators in the world are still learning and honing their craft with every project. That's why they're the best at what they do. My first creative director put it to me this way, you will never reach the top climbing this mountain because there is no top. You'll see a ledge above you that looks like the top from where you are, but once you finally get yourself up there, that's when you're going to see the next cliff face waiting ahead. So just take a minute to celebrate how far you've come, and then start climbing again. If you do choose to climb this mountain yourself, I wish you the best of luck, and I'm very excited to see the animation you create. And just know that you won't be climbing that mountain alone. This industry is full of fellow climbers who are happy to help each other out. And I hope that you have found this to be helpful. I want to thank the Animation Exchange for hosting the debut of this video, as well as all of those wonderful animators who contributed their knowledge to the script. If you're interested in seeing more videos about game animation, be sure to subscribe to New Frame Plus and consider supporting the show like all these nice people. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.